Thanks. <laughs> Hi, everyone. As you settle in, get your supplies ready. We're just going to wait for a few more people to um, get um, accepted into the class. In the meantime, um, it's always fun to just head over to the chat section and let um, us know where you're from, uh, where you're joining in from. Hi. Um, just really quickly, just to say who I am, since I'm the one <laughs> kind of talking. Um, my name is Michelle, and I'm from Tombow. I'm the social media manager over there. And we're actually based out of Suwannee, Georgia. I saw someone say hello from Atlanta, so not too far away. Um, and so uh, while we wait for everyone to join and tell us where they're from, um, we'll give it like a couple more minutes before I introduce Beth in the class. Look. This is always my favorite part. Just seeing like Cape Cod, Louisiana, um, Phoenix, Michigan, Spring Hill, Florida. I'm in Florida. Hello from Florida, Nebraska, Minnesota, New Zealand, California, Hawaii. Holy moly, Tallahassee, San Jose, Ohio. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah. Houston, so fun. California, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Well, it looks like right. most everyone is able to sort of get to the chat section, which tells me that most people yep. have been admitted into the class. So um, I'll just go ahead and introduce Beth. We're really excited on behalf of Tombo and Michaels to have our brand ambassador, Beth uh, Watson, teaching you quick and easy doodles, animal doodles to be specific. Um, if you have any questions during the class, feel free to drop them in the chat section. I'll be monitoring that. And Beth always does a good job monitoring that as well. Um, without further ado, Beth, I'm going to hand it off to you. Hey, everybody. My name is Beth Watson, and um, I can be found on social media at Creatively Beth. Um, that's also my blog um, name, and it's www.creativelybeth.com. I have been, oh, wow, I've, I've probably been drawing and doodling since I could hold a pen. So I see there's a lot of kids out there today, which is so exciting for me because I love teaching kids. So um, the adults too, but yeah, I always love teaching kids and watching their creativity bloom. So that's exciting for me. Um, I have worked with Tombow probably for about eight or 10 years now. Um, I love their dual brush pens. I love their pencils and their markers and I'm really super excited. I think this is my fourth yeah, this is my fourth class that I'm teaching for Tombow through Michaels. So I'm really super excited um, that we've got this platform and it's free to everybody. And I can teach a class and I've got students here from all over the country and it looks like internationally. So that's super exciting to me. And I just wanted, um, you know, to say hi. And if you guys have any questions, Michelle's going to be monitoring the comments, so try to put them in the comments, and we'll try to get um, to everybody's questions. Um, she'll just kind of call them out to me as I'm teaching. Um, I definitely do also have um, all of the printables that we're going to see in the class today. I have those um, loaded on my blog in a blog post, and um, all the printables are free to download um, directly from my blog. So um, I guess that is probably about it. Um, I'm from Fort Myers, Florida, which is about two hours south of Tampa on the west coast of Florida, which is the Gulf of Mexico side. Um, so it's nice and hot here today. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I love to go watch the sunset at the beach and I love to read. So that's just a little bit about me, but when I'm not being creative and, and drawing and doodling. Um, so yeah, if Felicia wants to go ahead and turn the camera um, onto my work surface. There we go. We can go ahead and get started. So I just wanna go over some of the um, supplies and materials that we'll be using today. Um, the, the, um, the dual brush pens that we're gonna be using today are actually the cottage pack which are right here um, on the desk. And that is a special set that's available at Michael's. It's a 10 pack. And um, I don't know if you've ever taken a class with me before, but I love to do my swatches. So anytime I'm um, working on a project or wanting to come up with a color scheme, I love to do a color swatch on um, a piece of scrap paper. 
So you can see that in the cottage set, we have 772 Dusty Rose, we have 757 Port Red, we have 993 Chrome Orange, we have 946 Gold Ochre, we have 192, which is asparagus, 312 Holly Green, 526 is True Blue, 679 is Dark Plum, 910 is Opal, and 992 is Sand. So those are the dual brush pens. That's the 10 pack that we're gonna be using today to color. The other supply um, that I love to use when we're doodling is um, the mono drawing pens. So this is a three pack that Michaels carries. And you can see here in the package, there is an 01, an 03, and an 05. And that's the actual width of the pen tip. So the 01 is the skinniest. It's got a really light line. The 03 is medium and the 05 is gonna be your heavier pen. So it's really nice to have a selection of pens when you're doing um, doodling and drawing, you can do the outlines in the, thin, in the thickest pen and then you can go back in and add details with the 03 or the 01. So, and then here is, um, I've got this sheet, as you can see it here on my work surface. Uh, I've got this as a free printable and um, you can download that and print it um, straight from my um, blog. Now I will tell you, if you're going to print to color, you, um, if you're going to be using a water-based marker, like a dual brush pen or like a Crayola washable marker or something like that, you really want to um, either draw it with a permanent marker or you want to go ahead and print it on a laser printer. A laser printer has dry ink. Um, if you print these out on an inkjet, which is a wet ink printer, and then you go to color them with water-based markers, you're going to end up smearing um, your drawing. So just to give you guys a little bit of, of insight on that. So here I can show you, there's the, the coloring page that I designed. And then here's a set of bookmarks that I designed as well with the little woodland creatures. And then I left one of the bookmarks blank so you could color your own. And then the other resource I have on the blog are the actual, you can download and print these as well for reference. I'm gonna go over these steps today, but we're gonna do a bear, a raccoon, a deer, and a fox. Okay, and I see a little deer out there. Somebody's got a deer filter on there. Shelly, Shelly's got a deer filter on her screen. I can see that. <laughs> so the kids are having fun. Um, the paper that I like to use, and again, this is available at Michael's. Um, this is um, Strathmore. This is a mixed media paper. This is the 300 series, which is, um, it's, the, it's the lesser expensive. Um, series of Strathmore. It's got this bright yellow cover. A lot of times Michael ha Michaels has them buy one, get one free or buy one, get one 50% off. So I always stock up, but it's got a nice, it's, it's a heavier paper and it's got a nice smooth surface for drawing. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to move these over just a tad. And just so that you guys can see what I'm doing better today, I'm going to use a little bit of a thicker pen. Um, I'm going to use the mono, the mono twin permanent marker from Tombow. And again, just like the dual brush pens, they've got two tips. Okay. So if everybody has your blank paper out, yes, colored pencils will work, whatever you have on hand. Um, it does not have to be dual brush pens. It just happens to be, that's what I love to color with because you can see even from this sheet that I colored here, the colors are so bright and so vibrant. And then like right there on the little deer, you can see how I was able to just add additional layers of color and shade him. And then same with the little raccoon. He's green because I had two different colored greens in this pack. And then we've got our little fox and you can kind of see I drew his little fur on there. And then I have a bear. And I did the same thing. I kind of did some flicking marks which I'll show you later on in the class. He looks like, and I can't remember his name, he looks like the bear from Toy Story. The, he was kind of mean and grumpy. So, cause he's kind of that purpley color. So, but yes, yeah, so that's why I like to use the dual brush pens, but you guys use whatever you have on hand. That's completely perfect. 
Um, and a lot of times I will start out with a pencil sketch first um, and just layer my pencil sketch one on top of each other. But I can definitely go ahead and show you all the different steps. For instance, here's our deer. So we're gonna start out by drawing kind of an egg-shaped oval on our page, okay? And I'm using a thicker pen just so that you guys can see it. You want the skinny end of the oval or the egg shape at the bottom and the, the wider up on top. And then we're just gonna draw a triangle that's eventually gonna become his nose. So this is kind of like a series that we're gonna do here of steps, okay? I'm gonna go on to my next step, which is again, we're gonna draw a nice oval. And then this time I'm gonna take that pointy triangle and to make it look more like the deer's nose, I'm just gonna round the corners of the triangle so that they're not actual angles, they're gonna be curved. So I can go around in a curve like that to draw the deer's nose, okay? And then I'm just gonna draw some guidelines for the antlers. So I'm just right now gonna draw two sticks right here coming out at the top like antlers would. And then the ears are gonna be shaped kind of like teardrops that are gonna be off to the side. So we're gonna draw two teardrops, one on either side. So there's a teardrop for an ear. And here's another teardrop. Okay. So this is the, the start of our deer. And then I'm just gonna draw a line down kind of like eyebrows and a nose. So you can see it's kind of like the bridge of your nose and like where your eyebrows would be over your eyes. Just two curved lines coming down right there at the nose. Just like that, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our next steps. And I'm doing them in order the way that I have them um, done on the printable. Each animal has four steps, okay? So let's go ahead with our next steps. Again, we're gonna go ahead and draw our, our deer head, which is an egg-shaped oval, wider at the top, skinnier at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and draw our triangular nose with the rounded corners, okay? Draw our teardrop ears. And our second teardrop ear. And we're gonna draw our antlers. Right, one there, coming out the top and one there. Okay, now what we're gonna go back in and do is again, draw the bridge of the nose, the eyebrows and the bridge of the nose, right in like that. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and draw in the inside of the ear. So you just wanna take each ear and draw a smaller teardrop inside that ear. He looks kind of funny because he doesn't have any eyeballs yet, but we'll get to that. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just gonna draw some other guides for his antlers. So I'm gonna draw two um, straight lines coming out at an angle from the center piece, okay? And that's gonna be kind of the framework. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do our final drawing. And when I'm doing this, um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do all these steps over top of each other. And then I will take um, and, you know, uh, trace it and clean it up a little bit. <laughs> I love the kids that are in here. They, there's a bunch of them that I'll have, that I'll have um, 
filters on. So they're looking like little deers. You guys crack me up. So again, final steps, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw our egg shape, our oval, larger at the top, narrower at the bottom. We're going to add our teardrop shaped ears. And then we're gonna add our smaller teardrop shape in the center. Go ahead and add your second ear and the second teardrop inside of the ear. Gonna go ahead and draw his nose, which is a triangle with the corners rounded. Go ahead and put in the eyebrows and the bridge of the nose with just two curved lines. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do two ovals for his eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and color those in black. So one oval on either side of the bridge of the nose, just like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead based on the outline that I drew of the antlers with the sticks. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of outline it and make it into an actual antler, which also kind of looks a little bit like a cactus, a skinny cactus. So doodling and drawing is all about breaking things down into shapes that you already know and recognize like ovals and teardrops and triangles. Okay, so there's our little deer right there. And then the last thing that I'm gonna add, um, I'm just gonna add a couple of little dots here at the top. We're gonna go ahead and um, zoom through each one of the animals first and then we can come back and do our coloring. So there you go. There's our little finished doodle of the Dior. Okay. All right. So there's our deer. Four easy steps, how to draw a deer, how to doodle a deer. And the fun thing about doodles is you can make them as large or as small as you like. So you can make them super large and turn them into like a banner or um, draw them on a gift bag or something like that. So the next one we're gonna do is the bear. He's super fun. So he's actually super easy. We maybe should have started out with him. As you can see those cute little bears. And then based upon this one bear, I drew him three different ways. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started with our bear. We're just gonna draw one large oval that's uniform in size, top to bottom, side to side. Okay, that's gonna be his head. Alrighty, and then at the top where his ears will be, we're gonna draw two circles. And I'm just kind of showing you how I, how I start out, how I overlap. Okay. So we've got a large oval for his head. And then we've got two small circles where the ears would be. Next step is we're gonna put in some of the details of his features. So I'm gonna take that shape I'm gonna do the two circles for the ears, but I'm not gonna complete them. And then I'm gonna connect the large oval for his head. And again, if you want to do all of this in pencil, you definitely could doodle in pencil. And then when we've reached all four steps, then you can go ahead and ink in on top of your pencil drawing. Okay, again, we're gonna give him a big triangle for a nose like that. And then I'm gonna draw his muzzle, which is gonna be another circle that's going to, it's gonna kind of run through his nose for right now, if you're doing this in pencil. 
I'm showing it in marker, but you can definitely do these steps in pencil. Okay. And the next step is gonna be um, to just refine these shapes. So we're gonna take these shapes and we're gonna refine them and, and turn them into our doodle. Okay, so we're gonna do our outline again, two circle ears connected by a big oval for a head. Okay. And then I'm gonna put two smaller circles inside the ears, just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the deer. We're gonna draw our triangle, but we're gonna round all of the corners to make it look like a nose, just like that. And then I'm gonna add the muzzle, but this time I'm not gonna draw the circle through his nose. Okay, and again, you can do all of these steps in pencil and then just go back and finalize your doodle in ink. Okay, and then our final bear. Yep, that looks good, Monica. Monica's holding up her drawing for me. Okay, so here's our final bear. We've got our two circle ears. We've got our oval head. There we go. We've got two more smaller circles for the inside of his ears. We've got our rounded triangle for the nose, just like that. We've got our circle for the bear's muzzle. And then I'm just gonna draw a line down that way as a simple way to do um, a mouth or the indication of a mouth. And then again, two ovals that I'm gonna fill in. They're gonna be his eyes. Okay, and there's Mr. Bear see him right there. And then on the printable, I did a tall skinny bear. I did a rounder bear. And then I did a girl bear. She's got cute cheeks instead of a muzzle and she's got eyelashes. So, and each one of them has a different, you can see I did some different styles of mouths. So he has a different style of mouth. This one reminds me of Yogi Bear, which probably a lot of you don't know who he is, but <laughs> this dude right here. <laughs> All right, so there's our bear. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my page. And next we have the clever fox. Okay, so here's our fox. And again, we're just gonna break him down into shapes and then refine our image until we have a final doodle of a fox. That's a girl fox, cause she's got a bow in her hair. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna basically draw, it looks like, a, I think it looks like a piece of pie. So we're gonna draw a triangle, but it's gonna have a curved top. So that's kind of why I think it looks like a piece of pie, right? Piece of pie. Then we're going to draw two triangles at the top that are end up going to end up being the ears. Okay. And then I'm just going to draw a curved, another curved section down at the tip of the triangle that's going to end up being the nose. So there's how our fox starts out as a piece of pie and some triangles. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and refine our shapes. So again, I'm gonna take the, the, the small pie shaped piece at the, at the end. I'm gonna round all the corners to create a nose. So most of all of the um, animals that we're drawing today, their noses are just 
rounded triangles. And then we're gonna have our pie shaped wedge with the curved top, right? And then I'm just gonna refine those ears a little bit, making them kind of curved triangles. Start at the top and kind of come down on the sides, make them a little bit more curved so they look like ears. And then we're gonna go ahead right from where the, the ear meets the head. And we're just gonna draw another line that again is like the eyebrow bridge of the nose. Okay, so there's the start of our fox. We've got our pie shaped, we've got our nose, we've got our ears defined. Okay, next we're gonna go off and make him a little bit furry because foxes kind of have that furry face. So we're gonna start with the nose and he's got that rounded triangle nose. And now we're gonna go ahead and, and add in the ears. We've got his rounded part of his head. There's his ears, okay. We're gonna add in the bridge of the nose and the eyebrows like we did before. Then we're gonna draw some jagged, we're gonna draw some jagged um, points. It's kind of like an upside down Christmas tree. So we're just gonna take and give him some fur, kind of like waves. If you look at that shape, it looks kind of like waves in the ocean. Here, I'll get that up closer. So right here, we've got some, they look like waves on the ocean. And if you need to turn your paper in order to get the right angle and the right shape, I turn my paper all the time to get the right angle and the right shape when I'm doodling. So again, over here on the other side, we're gonna give him waves or like a Christmas tree look. So he's got three kind of tufts of feather or feather fur. He's not feather, he's fur. So he's got three, three tufts of fur coming out of um, from, his, from the side of his head. And then just to do a different type of an ear, we're gonna give him just a side just going to go ahead and kind of give that ear a shadow, like he's got his ears almost half turned. Okay, so there's our fox. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do our final version of our fox. Okay, I still see a bunch of deer out there. I see a bear. I think that's a bear. You guys are killing me today with your filters. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead one more time and draw his rounded triangle nose. We're gonna go ahead and add his ears. Okay. And connect his ears with the top of his head. Draw the side of his ear and the side of his ear. Okay, everybody's doing good. And then we're gonna draw his fur on the side of his face. Three tufts of fur, and then connect that down to his nose. Same on the other side. Three tufts of fur, three waves, three branches of a Christmas tree. It can be whatever you see. And then we're gonna go ahead and again, draw his eyebrows and the bridge of his nose down to, you know, down to his nose. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and give him two oval eyeballs, one on either side of the bridge of his nose. It's two ovals, I'm gonna go ahead and color those right in black. And then I'm just gonna give him three little lines of like fur coming out of his ear. Right here, you can see three little tufts coming right out of his ear. One, two, three. Nice job, Monica. 
<laughs> you guys are having fun. All right, so there's our fox, okay? And then our last one, I think he's the cutest actually, is Mr. Raccoon. So here's our raccoon. We're gonna start out with a football for the raccoon. He's a football shape. And then there you can see cute little raccoon mom, cute little raccoon kid right there. All right. So yes, we're going to start out, we're going to draw a football shape on our paper. And that's going to be the base of our raccoon's head. Okay. Just like that. See the football? And then we're going to do two triangles for ears up on the top. And then we're gonna do a triangle, not quite halfway, a little bit down from halfway. We're gonna do a triangle for his nose. Kind of starts out looking like a cat a little bit. But we've got three triangles and a football, okay? So now we're gonna take that football. And I'm gonna give him some hair at the top. So again, we're doing three little tufts three little spikes of hair right between his ears. Go ahead and draw the bottom of the football. We're gonna take that triangle and we're gonna round the corners like we've done before with the other animals, just like that. And we're gonna take those real pointy triangles and we're just gonna round those triangles a little bit. Kind of like the, the leaf from a flower or the petal from a flower. It's kind of like that shape. Okay, we'll go ahead and draw the inside of his ears as well. So there's our second. Hey, Julia, are you having fun? <laughs> if you're having fun, that's the only rule that I have while you're doing art. Yeah, just have to have fun. Because when I first started drawing and doodling, mine looked really bad too. <laughs> All right, so we're, then we're gonna go ahead and add additional detail. We're gonna add his little, his little bandit. You know, they always say that raccoons look like little bandits because they've got their little eye mask on. So we're gonna add his eye mask, okay? So we're gonna start with his nose, rounded triangle. And then from that, it's the center of, of the rounded triangle, we're gonna draw two teardrops, just like that. Or wings, maybe angel wings, or even um, they could look like a cartoon kind of mustache. Just kind of have to break the shapes down into what you think they look like. So right there, so that could be angel wings or teardrops. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and fill in the football top with this three little spiky hairs of fur. And we're gonna draw the football bottom, right like that, fill in his ears. Okay, and he's coming to life pretty quick. All right, there's step three. Okay. All right. Now for our final little raccoon here. I always like to start out with the nose because that's kind of usually the center point of a, of a face. Okay. So we've got our rounded triangle nose. We've got our wings or teardropped shaped little raccoon mask right there we're going to go ahead and draw the top of his head top of his football shaped head and give him three little spiky tufts of fur on the top of his head and then we're going to go ahead and draw the football bottom okay and then his rounded triangular ears, and then the center of his ears. Ears, ears, 
okay? A lot of these shapes are very similar from animal to animal. And I don't know if it's like that in real life. I am not a realistic drawer, so I just like to doodle. And then we're just gonna give him a cute little smiley face mouth. <laughs> it's a little crooked. So see, there's our raccoon. Right there, okay, good. Who wants to turn their page around and show me? Show me your drawings. Oh, that's good, 222. I don't know what your name is, but your screen name is 222. Good job, 222. <laughs> Deidre, nice job. Jonathan, excellent. Brenda, nice. Michaela, good job. Alyssa, those are good, you guys. I love them, Monica. Gabs, you guys are awesome. Here, let me scoot over into the other screen and see some of the other, oh, nice. Isabella, you got a body on yours and everything. Genesis, oh, Noella, she already colored hers in. Good job, guys. Melipad, you guys are awesome. Oh, there's Smitha, hey, Smitha, <laughs> and your girls. <laughs> I know Smitha. All right. I think that's about it for people showing. Oh, Sam. Nice job, Sam and Cindy. Nice job, guys. I love that. So good. Lincoln. Great job, Lincoln. All right. Lucas, Sam, Debbie, Donna. I'm looking. Amelia, Viviana. Yours are excellent, girl. Very nice. Anisha, I'm looking. I'm probably butchering everybody's name and I apologize. But yes, good job, guys. I am impressed. Laffy Taffy, good job. <laughs> uh, all right, Ghost Spider, nice job. All right. Well, you guys did an excellent job. I am super impressed. Super, super impressed. All right. So I went ahead and redrew our little color page here. So if you want me to, I can show you some other little cute, like um, on the coloring page, we've got some flowers. We've got an acorn and some leaves and some mushrooms. I can go ahead and just ink those in real quick and show you guys how um, to draw those. Some of them are really super easy. Um, I'm gonna take my 05 on my mono drawing pen. Um, so the little swirly flower right here, see it right there. That's just the circle with the swirl in the center. So we're just gonna start out drawing a circle. And then as you get back to meet your circle at the end, just gonna draw a swirl inside of it. Swirl, swirl, swirl. And then just draw two leaves on one side. Hey Beth. Kinda, yeah. I think um, your um, image went out of focus. A oh, bit. I went out of focus, okay. Oh, much better, perfect. Is that okay? All right. Usually if I put my hand in there, it'll, I probably was moving things, things back and forth too much. Is that better focus? Yes, perfect. Okay, cool, thanks, Michelle. All right, so there's our cute little flower, just a little circle swirl with two little leaves, okay? Um, let's see, the mushrooms are really fun too, and they're really pretty easy. So a mushroom is like half a circle, but don't draw your line straight across to make a complete half circle. Draw it a little bit angled or a little bit at an arch. Can you see that? So it's like a half circle with an arched bottom. Okay. And then we can go ahead and just draw our stem. And then I always like to draw polka dots on my mushrooms. Polka dots, polka dots, polka dots. So there's a mushroom. OK. 
Okay. And then the leaves are really easy. So we'll do this leaf first. So it kind of looks like a hand with maybe only four fingers. So if you guys can see this this way, I'm gonna turn my page a little bit. So it's just gonna be just a, um, like a scallop, a hump, a hump, one at the top, and then two more on the other side and come back and meet. And then just draw the, the stem inside the leaf and the veins, just like that, little leaf. And then I have another simpler leaf that's really just a teardrop. So I just draw a teardrop shape and then I just draw the stem right through it like that. All right. Everybody's drawing. I see everybody's tops of everybody's heads, <laughs> which is cool. All right, this is a fun little flower too. So this one's got three petals. I do a teardrop and a teardrop and then another teardrop in the middle and then a stem and then two more teardrops for leaves. So that one's really super, super simple right there. There's our little teardrop flower. And then the acorn, the bottom of the acorn is kind of a little bit like drawing a heart. So you're going to go and do like the bottom of a heart shape, kind of like that. And then the little cap again, it's just a semicircle. So it's a half a circle. And then you're just going to draw a line. So there's your little um, acorn cap. It's not a mushroom cap. And then you just draw a stem coming out of the top and then a pattern of some kind. I usually like to do just like a plaid, a diagonal plaid on the, on the acorn cap, just to give it a little bit of texture like an acorn has that texture on its little cap, just like that. Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, I have a different kind of leaf over here that's got, it just has more, I'm just gonna do kind of like a swerve. It kind of looks like an oak leaf a little bit. So instead of doing um, just a scallop, you're gonna do kind of like a rounded scallop. And then just draw the veins in on the leaf on the inside, kind of like that. So it's kind of like the other leaf, only it's, it's a little different. <laughs> Jonathan, you're making all kinds of faces at me. Hey Beth, it's, it's <laughs> gotten blurry again. Oh, maybe because I'm putting it up and down so much. There, oh, that's has that gotten better? Yes. Yes. Probably because I'm putting it up and down so much because I'm doing detailed stuff. Sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish these leaves. Put a couple more leaves in here. I've got another mushroom and another flower to draw. And then we can start coloring. How does that sound to everybody? Here's another mushroom. This one's really tall and skinny. And again, polka dots, polka dots, skinny stem. So there's another style of mushroom. And then I'm gonna draw another one of the teardrop flowers. And it's just three teardrops, a stem, and then two teardrops for leaves. So we've got teardrop flower, and then there's tall skinny mushroom. Okay, I'll put that back down. Seems if I put my hand on it, it. Okay, we're all ready for coloring. All right, that sounds good to me. 
Okay. I've got my cottage palette out here. And the first one I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna I'm gonna color in the deer. So I'm just gonna go and I so the dual brush pens are unique. Most of the Tombow pens actually are unique in the fact that they um, have two tips on them. So the dual brush pens have a nice big brush tip, which you can see here. So there's my sand, nice big brush tip. And then on the other end, they have a bullet tip. Okay. Which gives you kind of more like a like writing. And then of course you can do. You can do the hand lettering with the dual brush pens. Oops. So they're really very versatile with the two tips. And I love that about a lot of the Tombow pens are like that. All right. So I like to color with the, um, the brush tip on the dual brush pen. And since this is an animal and it's got fur, I'm just gonna do little kind of tiny strokes like this. And you can do this with any style marker. It doesn't have to be this specific marker. I just like the, this pen tip is the brush tip on the dual brush pen is just very good for coloring. So yeah, I'm just gonna do my little fur, just little short strokes so that it looks like it's got fur. And the other nice part about the dual brush pens is the more um, layers you place on top of each other, the darker the color will get. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more color through his nose and then have it go lighter up towards the little dots on the top of his head. And I think the dots are to indicate that a, a deer is a fawn, which is a baby deer. And I think they grow out of their little, that little marking. I could be wrong, but I think that's the case. All right. How's everybody doing with their deer? Good. And you can color what you can color whatever colors you'd like. There's no rules. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and color in his ears or her ears. And again, I'm just gonna give a couple extra strokes towards the head where there would be additional shad shadowing. Okay. and go a little bit lighter out there. So you can kind of see, All right? And then I went ahead and used the um, 679, which is our dark plum. I used that for the antlers. So I just thought it looked fun. I love using um, unique color palettes for things like this. Gives it such a fun, whimsical look. So I just go ahead and color in his antlers. With the dark plum. And again, the dual brush pens are perfect for that. I'm gonna go ahead and color his eyes in with the, the dark plum because I think that looks pretty. I think I'll do his nose that way too, or her nose. It could be a girl or a boy. All right. And then um, the Dusty Rose 772, I'm gonna use that for the inside of the ears. Okay, inside of the ears, nice. So there's our deer. What does everybody think? How's everybody doing with their coloring? Doing good? All right. I got a thumbs up from Valentina, who looks like a deer. She's got her deer filter on. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up with those filters. Um, the fox is going to be really cool to, to color too. I'm going to use 
Um, the 993, which is our chrome orange, and the 946, which is the gold ochre. I'm going to start out with the lighter one, which is the 993. And again, so on a fox, the color is going to be kind of similar to the deer. The color is going to be on the nose, and then his like bushy fur pieces on the side are going to be um, more of a white color. And again, if you just take and and do strokes, kind of like flick the tip of your brush pen, you get kind of that fur effect from the strokes of the pen, which I really like. I'm just gonna add additional color at the base of the ears where they, where they meet his head, and then just kind of go in a pattern towards the nose, flicking that color. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in some of the darker, the 946, um, the gold ochre. So I'm just going to add that out from the base of his nose up into his head. Give him a little depth, a little dimension, which is really super easy with the dual brush pens. Okay, I'm gonna give a little bit of color at the base of his ear, just to give it a little bit of shading. Okay, and then I think I'm gonna add, in this set there's also um, kind of like, um, it's kind of like a peachy color almost. I'm gonna add this a little bit in his, in his ears. It's um, 910 opal. Okay, I guess we could add a little bit of that to his fur. And I'm going right over top of his eyes because I'm eventually going to color those in a darker color. I'm just gonna flick some strokes out, kind of give his fur a little bit of dimension. If you guys can see that. But yeah, that opal color is really super pretty. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and color in his eyes with just a black pen. And same with his nose. Go ahead and do that black as well. How's everybody doing out there? Good? All right, let's see, Mr. Bear. What color should we do the bear? Should we do him the port, the port wine color? 757 port red? Okay, here we go. Somebody needs to tell me what the name of the bear is from Toy Story, I can't remember. If you remember, tell me in the comments. This color palette really is fun for a woodland creature, forest animal type of a theme, because it's a, kind of a muted palette. It's a muted color scheme. Now we don't know what the name of the bear is from Toy Story. I can't remember his name either. He was at the preschool. <laughs> anyway, I digress. I think he was about this color. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead again, lay in some color. It's a doodle. Don't have to be too concerned. I'm just gonna, again, the nice thing about coloring the eyes in dark is you can just kind of color right over. I'm gonna give him some little strokes of fur. Now, since a bear's fur is a little bit shorter, I'm just gonna do really short strokes so that um, his fur looks a little bit different um, from the deer or the fox. Their fur, I think, is a little bit longer. Okay, give him some little fur strokes. Okay. Here we go. 
<laughs> How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? And I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna embrace this color scheme and I am gonna draw his muzzle in this pink color, which is the um, Dusty Rose 772 and the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. And again, this is the Cottage set, Cottage, C-O-T-T-A-G-E. And it's one of the special sets that Tombow developed specifically for Michaels. All right. And then we just need to do his nose. Should we do his nose black? I think we should go ahead and do his nose and his eyes black so that they pop. So we've got two eyes, got a nose. Oh, I like him. He looks cute. I like his pink muzzle. Okay, there we go. So there's our bear. You can kind of see his little fur texture I gave him by flicking the pen. Okay, how are we doing on time? Oh, we got a couple minutes left. If you guys are wrapping up, you can definitely turn around and show me what you got. And we've also got, I did the raccoon in the green because I just thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> and I had two different colors of green. So we're gonna do the light green, which is the asparagus 192. But this would work with any, if you had like two blue colors or any um, lighter and darker tone of any color markers. Just gonna go ahead and again, I'm gonna use some strokes short flicking strokes so we look like we've got fur and i love this muted green the asparagus and the um the holly green really um go well together they complement each other nicely okay get him colored in i'm going to use the 312 which is the holly green i'm going to do his little mask here. Again, I'm just going to do a lot of little strokes to get that nice deep green color. I'm going to go straight over his eyes again because we're going to color those in dark so we don't have to worry about that. The other nice thing about the dual brush pens is if you go um, by accident, if you go dark to light instead of light to dark, um, they are self-cleaning. So here, let me show you real quick. Let's take our, well, actually, let me show you. Let's do these two. So I'm going to, I'm coloring with the port red, and then I'm going to go in and color. And now I've gotten color on my, pink marker, you can see how I can just run that on my piece of paper and it basically self cleans itself. So you can see here where the darker red is, the darker port is added into the pink, the dusty rose. And then by the end of the, the line there, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's cleaned itself. So that's a fun thing about the dual brush pens. Um, let's go ahead and color in his ears. It's a nice way to actually um, blend and be able to get a, a more varied color palette from, you know, if you're working with a limited number of markers. Okay, there's that. And then we'll color in his little nose. And I think that's probably about time. All right, there he is. There's our woodland creatures, our deer. We've got Mr. Raccoon with his green color scheme. Little fox, which he turned out super cute. Those two oranges are perfect for a fox. And then our bear, which I went ahead and did in the, the, uh, the port red. Okay, all right. Do we have any questions? You guys want to show me your final 
colored images. Oh, nice, Monica, great job. Oh, Celine, I think is how you pronounce it. Nice job. Very good. You guys are rocking it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, I'm gonna go. Nice job, Margarita. Alyssa, Genesis, Manas, M-A-N-A-S, Manas. Nice job. I'm probably not pronouncing names properly. I apologize. Good job. Amelia, Viviana, very nice job. You guys are so talented. Okay. Just have a couple pages of people showing. All right. Very nice. Very, very nice, guys. All right. I think they've got me back on. Yep, they've got me back on this camera. <laughs> hey. Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming um, out today. Oh, yeah, I think we're at our time limit. Sorry. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Um, go ahead and visit my blog and download all of these resources, free printables. And um, all of the supplies that I've used here today, I picked up at my local Michael store. Um, and I just love my Tombow products. And the fact that they're available at Michael's is just the icing on the cake. So... Um, I hope everybody has a great evening, afternoon, and um, yeah, I want to thank everybody, and I'll see you all later. Thank you, Bye. Beth. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.